Hi everybody, uh, my name is Dr. Steve Simpson and thanks very much for watching this video. Uh, we got a tough one today because I have been asking myself questions about why are people capable of such extreme and illogical behavior? People who, for the rest of the time, are very sensible. Well, when I give presentations, uh, I explain this by talking that these thoughts surface from the reptile brain. Now, when I say that, I have this uh, feeling that I know what a reptile brain is, uh, but it's pretty hard to describe to other people. And I've got no idea really what other people think a reptile brain is. So I thought, well, I'm supposed to be a professional presenter. So um, that's not good enough and um, a bit more, well, a lot more work and research is necessary. So as always, when I start delving into things, um, what I discover is often a complete surprise to me. Well, the first thing that I realized is that I shouldn't have been talking about the reptile brain at all. I should have been talking about the reptilian brain because this is a phrase that was first uh, coined by an American neuroscientist called Paul McLean. And uh, this was back in the 1960s when he was writing and talking about this. And his theory, uh, which of course many other people subs have subscribed to as well, and many others certainly don't, but anyway, his theory was that during the development of our brain, we go through um, three evolutionary stages. This is the human brain. And at the most primitive and simple level, this is the reptilian brain um, that I mentioned in my talks. And this is the seat of our behaviors such as aggression, uh, the way we defend our territory, uh, violence, and uh, the ritual displays of all of these and other primitive emotions. The second level of the brain is called the limbic system. Now, even as medical students, I was taught about the limbic system, which is um, a little higher up the brain, and the reptilian brain is the floor of the brain. The limbic system is a little higher up. And um, so a big surprise to me was actually that this phrase was first used by Paul McLean. And he said that there are many characteristics between the limbic system and that reptilian brain, but the limbic system is more highly evolved and um, it is the home of more social behaviors such as uh, reproductive behavior. And of course, from reproductive behavior comes offspring. And as we all know, offspring need nurturing and looking after. And apparently these emotions are based in the limbic system and they are probably a lot more reflex than we believe. We all believe we're parents for the first time, but there have been millions of other parents before us. And then the third part of the brain, which is the higher function, is known as the cortex. And here we have our logical thought, we have our language skills and communication patterns, and uh, abstract and creative thought too. Now, in a couple of my earlier blogs, uh, I talked about the work of Jung and Freud, and I made the point that you know, it's pretty fashionable now to trash their ideas. But of course, we know a lot more science um, than they did then. So I think that their thoughts on, uh, on the origin of thought itself were pretty good and, and um, deserved credit at that time and some credit even now. So thinking of Maclean's views about the reptilian, the limbic and the cortex development, um, uh, stages of our, that our brain goes through, and Freud and Jung's views on the origin of thought, it reminds me of another great thinker called Maslow. And Maslow is famous for his hierarchy of human needs. And he described a pyramid. And at the bottom of the pyramid are our basic emotions, because the most important thing to all of us is that we survive, the survival instincts. And then the pyramid goes to the top, and um, if we're lucky enough to climb higher up the pyramid, at the top are the, the higher uh, social needs of uh, wanting the respect of our peers and also of leaving some kind of a legacy behind us uh, with lofty ideals. 
So there's uh, further food for thought. And the reason why I was particularly keen to research this subject in more detail is that we see these extreme behaviors, as I mentioned right at the beginning, and are puzzled to explain them. Well, I think if we think, if we uh, recognize or postulate that a lot of our thinking and actions are driven by our reptile brain a lot more than we think. We would all like to think that our cortex is by far the most important part of our brain. But rather than coming up with lots of original rational thought, I just wonder whether our cortex is actually spending most of its time and energy dealing with these reptilian thoughts and presenting them in a way that can be justified at least um, as rational, sensible ideas to come up with. So my fear is that when we are under stress and when there is conflict, and sadly there's a lot of that in the world at the moment, our reptile brain, our reptilian brain, I must correct myself there, um, is always trying to take over. So if we believe in higher things, then our duty is to chill down that reptile brain as much as we can and really use our higher rational thoughts to try and make the world um, a better place for us and hopefully a better place for other people too. So that was a bit of a deep one this week, but thanks very much for watching. Those of you who are watching on YouTube, uh, at the end of this video, as usual, I will give you a link back to my website where I have written these uh, ideas down, um, I think probably rather better than I can say them in this week's blog. So uh, thanks again for watching and uh, I hope to see you again soon, hopefully in about a week's time. Until then, hope everything goes well for you and have a lot of fun. Goodbye.